What is failure? Perhaps when the plan falls apart. Maybe when the project results are underwhelming. No, not quite. When your heart breaks, momentum stops, when your world is shaken at its foundation. No, to put it simply, failure is not going. Failure is the plan never falling apart because you were too scared to make one. Failure is never being underwhelmed by the results of that project because you couldn't find the courage to start. Failure is no heartbreak, no setbacks, no challenge to your worldview because you stood still. I see life's disappointing occurrences as a sort of transaction. Some temporary discomfort in exchange for the very wisdom you were looking for placed in the palm of your hand. You endure the pain to get the answers. You accept chaos today in exchange for the map that enables you to navigate the terrain. How can something be a failure if it places you right where you need to be? How can something be a failure if it brings you closer to the life you dream of? Maybe we don't look at life as failure versus success, but rather as being stagnant versus being in motion immobile versus mobile. Maybe it's that simple. If you are moving, regardless of how fast you're giving yourself a chance to overcome, to collect wisdom and pick up armor, you're giving yourself a chance to be more tomorrow than you are today. And that means we stop accepting the notion that we are standing still for our benefit. Justifying that we're only stationary because we're waiting for the right moment. We're here because we need this to be perfect. No, there are a million different ways to get what you want out of life, a million different paths to get you there. None of them require standing still. I already cringe at the amount of time I've wasted waiting for the right time. How I would sit on releasing this or starting that. Oh, it's because I'm a perfectionist. Only to learn that perfectionism is really just fear in disguise. You can sit there and wait and refine and refine and refine. But I'll tell you what, the one who moves, who creates, shares, collects feedback, adjusts, and repeats will have achieved that level of quote-unquote perfection before you feel prepared to acknowledge and share your prototype. It was simply by going that evolution took place. And it took me a long time to grasp this, to understand it, and a part of me didn't want to believe it. Because I found it inherently uncomfortable. But life rewards the bold. It always has and always will. Calling for a sort of calculated recklessness. Great things are achieved by doers who can put their egos aside and let the world humble them on their way to the next attempt. In Ron Chernow's biography on Washington, one of the common themes, which I believe made Washington one of the most influential people in the history of mankind, was his ability to think, analyze, seek out the opinions of people around him, 
And then, once decided, that was that. He was all in. The rubber had met the road. This was now the way. And I find power in that. As overthinking is so often our undoing, right? Weighing out worst case scenarios, contingency plans, this versus that. When progress requires that we, sure, spend a little bit of time deciding which general direction we go, but most importantly, that we start. And I think we've all been guilty of this, overanalyzing, overplanning. But just like a sailor can't predict the winds, we can't predict all life's variables. Again, it's deciding on a general direction and then trusting ourselves to navigate life's obstacles as they arise. It's finding trends and patterns along the way and doing our best to utilize them as we move forward. There will be points where the road ahead seems overwhelming, the obstacles too abundant to make sense of, where the mind compels you to stay where you are and stare out in awe. It will suggest that what's behind you is safer, that the world you know contains fewer monsters than the world you don't. It might even convince you that whatever ambitions you had weren't really that important, that you could easily live without them. And the longer you stand there, the longer you listen to that voice, the louder it gets. You dismiss it with every step forward. Your momentum is a dagger through the heart of any doubt that once tried to occupy the precious real estate behind your eyes. You don't have to outthink it, outsmart it. You just have to move forward. And what you find is that the mountains you once peered up at weren't all that they seem. A culmination of little hills that can be climbed, manageable rocks that in actuality can be used to propel yourself up the mountainside. There was never a perfect path up. No magic transport to the summit. You might even think to yourself, what a shame that so many are still on the sidelines waiting to devise their perfect approach, making plans and drawing maps. But that's not how any of this works. To win, you go. To make progress, you move. Knowing full well that you'll find your dead ends You'll spend time and exhaust energy going down certain paths that don't ultimately lead you where you wanted to go. But what a gift, the ability to reverse course and take the right at the fork instead of the erroneous left you previously took. Your errors are not permanent. Your errors are correctable. Stagnation is what's permanent. Wishing is permanent. Someday is permanent. But right now, that's pure value. So next time you find yourself looking out, as we all do, remind yourself that there are many ways to transform your reality for the better. Many paths to the mountaintop but there is only one way to assure you never get there, and that is standing still. So trust yourself to figure life out as it comes, to take the pain and extract from it wisdom, to find the strength beyond the uncertainty. Life is giving you everything that is required. Not some things or a few things, everything. All it asks of you is that you dismantle the delusion of perfection and begin.